answer for this week's edition of Saving Time. We're doing female bacon. We're going to roast it. It's really good. And what a good price right now. $1.97 a pound at No Froze. You cannot go wrong. We're going to make potato latkes. And if you've never had them, you're in for a treat. You might know them as potato pancakes, but potato pancakes are thinner. They're not as, they're not, they're not as good. And we're going to do some roasted broccoli with it. It's a beautiful meal. It's going to look fabulous on your plate. And it's easy peasy. So get ready. Before we go any further, I'm going to put this back in the fridge because I'm not quite ready for it. We'll tuck that in there so we don't have to worry about it sitting there. I'm just about ready to go. And this is so easy. These sales this week, you can get a bag of potatoes, um, nice yellow potatoes for, I think they were $3 and change, so right around $4 market, no frills. The broccoli, $1.97 a pound. Again, what a good buy. I got all this stuff for this meal for $12. And the things that I'm adding are nothing. So, I mean, honestly, we're coming in under 15 this week. Right off the bat, start preheating your oven to 350. I'm not going to forget to tell you that this week. I took the outside peel off this onion, uh, off camera. We want to grate the onion. We're going to grate it. We're going to grate the potatoes. Everything gets mixed in. So just peel off the outside part and be careful with the grater, okay? Don't, um, ha, my knife is making noise. We'll move it over there. <laughs> um, be careful. Don't. Don't grate your knuckles, okay? And we're just gonna, you just want it small. If you want to chop, go ahead and chop, but I like it better grated. When it gets too small, turn it so that you just go the other way. Those outside pieces are not going to grate for you, but they're good to hold on to. That's good enough. That part's not gonna grate. That part's not gonna, look at the, this is coming back as more food. We're not wasting it, it's coming back. And then grate this one. I, you know, grating onions, I, I mean, I, I might get a little teary, but it's not somehow as bad as slicing them. I don't know why. Now if I get all teary, I'm gonna look like a nut. But, whoops, caught it. It's a little tricky, but you get those nice tiny pieces and then they're going to, um, whoop. Shannon's laughing at me and that's making me laugh. I don't even know why, but I think it's because I'm so close to the grater. I don't know for sure. Or maybe because I caught it with my apron. I don't even know. Okay, that's good enough. Oh, it's getting my eyes. Onion is grated. You're gonna get the nice big bowl so you've got room to stir, okay? Don't, um, don't mess around with the little one because then you've just got no space. Get rid of as much as you can into the bowl. We're gonna grate the potatoes next. And there you go, look at that, that's fantastic. Look at all the liquid that comes out of the onion, isn't that surprising? I'm, all, I, I, I'm surprised by that always. For the potatoes, I'm gonna do one with you and then we'll do the rest of them off the camera. Just pick nice big potatoes because you've gotta be able to hold on to it to grate it. So don't choose little tiny ones for this and get that skin off. You don't need to be too fussy. I suppose if you had red skins, if you left a little bit, it wouldn't be the end of the world because it would look nice in there, but by and large. So grab your potato and the same thing. You're going to grate it. Watch those fingers, okay? Shannon's laughing. I can tell it's because she thinks I'm gonna grate my finger and that it'll be on camera and horrible but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, this, these are so good. Now it's important that you start with this because we're going to drain away all of the liquid. Otherwise they're not gonna bake up nicely for us. They'll be mushy. So don't skip this step, okay? Start with these and make sure you do it because it's important to the final product if this is where you begin. That onion did get my eyes a little bit. I'm getting a little weepy. I think it's still in the grater. I'm gonna not worry about that little piece. I'm gonna do the other three potatoes. We want a total of four potatoes. I'm gonna do them off camera. We'll come right Okay, back. potatoes are all grated and in there with the onion. Next thing we're gonna do, we wanna add two tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna say that's pretty close to two, so I'm not even gonna think about it. There we go, box your uncle. And that one can just be set to the side for the recycling. 
Next thing we need in there is some salt and pepper. So we'll just grab, now don't be afraid to salt this, okay? Do, do like a tablespoon of salt. Don't be afraid of that. It, it, it's gonna want, it's potatoes. They're gonna want some salt. Next thing, get a little bit of pepper. Don't go as crazy with the pepper. You can add it at the table. Not everybody loves it. Right, fair enough. So we'll leave it at that. Next thing you're gonna add to that is two tablespoons of flour. And I've got this big thing of flour down here. And look at me, I actually have my tablespoon measuring out. So there we go. There's one and two. There we go. And let me put this lid on so I don't spill anything in there. There. Finally, two eggs. So, these are so good, okay? And you can adjust the quantities. Like, this is going to make 12 at least. And if you are a smaller group, just do half and make six. No big deal. Just, uh, or if you want to make a double batch, like, you're going to like them. So, if you want to make a double batch, go for it. You just like them. So, there we go. Everything's in here. Onion, potato, eggs, flour, salt and pepper, a little bit of oil. Grab yourself a spoon and mix it all up. These are, I used to do latkes on, like, in a pan on the stove and they stick and make a mess and then I decided there's an easier way. Started doing them in the oven and I love them. They're perfect. They're perfect and none of the hassle, all right? None of the hassle. I love that. So you're mixing it until everything is well coated and you can tell. You can easily tell that that's all together. Now you can see how wet it is and we don't want it to be that wet. So get your colander and put it over a bowl. This one's got good feet, so it can set right down in the bowl. If yours, otherwise find one that will kind of sit on top of the bowl. And then just scoop it in. And don't waste any. <laughs> Use your hand, okay? Just get everything in there. You just worked hard grating all the onion and potato. Don't, um, don't waste it in this bowl. But get that big bowl to start because otherwise it's messy. There we go. And this, scooch it right off of there. And then I usually get, up oh, there. I usually get a wooden spoon for this next step. And just, we're trying to get moisture out of it. So just use the wooden spoon to press it down. Okay? We're just gonna do that periodically. We're gonna leave it now. It's just gonna sit there and it'll drain away. That can go off to the side. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do is get our pea meal bacon ready for the oven. And again, you know, for years, I thought you had to cook pea meal bacon in a pan on the stove. Slice it up and do this and that and the other thing. And then, I don't know how I found out about it. It doesn't even matter anymore. If you're finding out about it from me, you're very welcome. Um, cooking pea meal bacon in the oven. I love it. I, I do this often for sandwich meat. I cook one of these and then I've got nice sandwich meat. And you think at $1.97 a pound this week, I've got two pounds here. That's like, you think about what you're paying for cold cuts per 100 grams, probably about $2 per 100 grams if you're lucky. Like this is 800 gra 900 grams. <laughs> do the math, right? But like instead of $20, we're in four. That's a huge thing, and that'll make a lot of sandwiches. So let me rinse my hands, and then we're going to add some water to that pot. There's that, and there's no soap in that one, which is inconvenient. I feel like I want to get some soap for that one. There we go. Now, with this 350, I'm going to put a little bit of water on it just so that it's not sticking in the pan. And then we're going to cover it up with foil so it doesn't just dry out in the oven. About a half inch, just water, nothing special here. There's no need to do anything extra. So just, and a half inch is just so that um, it doesn't boil away in the time it's in the oven. That's gonna be great. Put the fat up. 
fat up so that it works its way down, right? You want the fat to flavor its all the way through. If your casserole has a lid, fantastic. Otherwise, get a piece of foil. And cover it up relatively tight because otherwise, if the steam gets out, you're going to lose all that water that you put in there. So make sure that you're covering it up. That's the trick, okay? We cover things when we want the liquid to stay in. You take the lid off when you want the liquid to evaporate. So keep that in mind. I mean, when you're simmering things on the stove, same principle. Lid off, you're going to lose it. If you're trying to thicken something, lid off. Just like that. Oven's at 350. I'm going to put it to one side so I can fit the lock is in beside it. I have a timer set with 50 minutes on it. And I'm just going to hit start. And then we're going to move back to our latkes again. Now, for this, you can butter them if you want. There were some of these sprays around, the olive oil spray, whatever you buy. Um, if you have something like that, give your muffin tin a good spray. You really need to, it needs that where it's going to stick and make a mess. If you don't have a muffin tin, you can use ramekins, okay, and then just set them on a baking sheet to all stay together so you don't have to pick them out one at a time. That would be a huge hassle. I'm just going to spray this down here so that we don't have a mess on our hands and I don't hit the camera. That would be a shame. Give them a good spray and then use your fingers and just make sure that the sides have some too, okay? Just, just to make sure, I mean, you're saving yourself a hassle, right? So do that, just like that, and then clean yourself up. That can go over too. I'm getting a lot of dishes, but you know what? Then things are going to be in the oven and it's going to be okay. Basically, we want to follow our pea meal bacon in a 10 minute mark. Okay, so we don't want to waste time at this point. Give these another press. You can press it with your hands. You're just trying to get rid of any extra, extra liquid. Obviously, we're going to have some left. We don't, we're not going to get it dry. I sometimes, when I do grated potato, if you don't want to do this, get your salad spinner out. Sometimes I spin them in the salad spinner and it draws out the liquid too. Kind of makes a starchy mess, but <laughs> sometimes that's the way I want it to be. And you can see in the bowl all that we've taken out. Like that's a lot, right? We're gonna put, I've got a bit of a mess that I'm not happy with, but I remember. I've got that. Um, you know what? I This week a few people have reached out about being interested in some cooking classes and I think it's a great idea and now that restrictions are being lifted in numbers is something we can reasonably do. If you're into it and you've got an idea of the kinds of things you'd like to cook, send me a note, okay? Send me a note I, on, in the comments section on the, on the video itself or reach out to me on Facebook. One way or the other, reach out and let some get some ideas of things you'd like to cook. Like maybe it's dessert items. We don't ever have time for desserts here, but uh, we can certainly do baking pies, making jam, preserves, cooking a roast beef dinner. I, I keep wishing that I could do that, but um, obviously we can't pull off a roast beef dinner in an hour or less. It's not a weeknight meal, maybe. Uh, or like roast turkey, like when holidays are coming up. Maybe you want to learn how to make a holiday meal. I don't know, whatever. Reach out to me and let me know what your ideas are for cooking classes. And we could see how many people are interested or maybe you've got a group that would like to get together on their own. All I'm doing here is dividing it up. Then we can come back and even them all out. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get some in every little cup and then we can divvy it up. This poor guy, like he's so sparse there. That's better. That one looks light. And this one looks light. 
we're just filling them out. If you had used like four massive potatoes, you might have too much. And if that's the case, either grab another muffin tin or a couple ramekins or whatever you've got. Just make them relatively even. It doesn't matter if they're exact. It's gonna matter at the table, right? Especially if you have kids, mine's bigger. <laughs> you don't need that. You don't need that hassle. That's the only reason we're trying to make them relatively alike. That one looks a little light. Okay, I'm almost to the bottom of my, of my bowl here. There. And then again, just, uh, I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to let it go. Of course I'm not. There's that. See how it's just come together so nicely? And you're pressing it in. Those are well greased so that we're not going to have a problem on the other side when we take them out of the oven. And there. I'm a mess. I'm going to go over and wash up. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. We'll check the timer and see how close I am to um, the 10 minute mark to chase them. Ah, oh, look at that. That one needs to go in. Ha, huh. nice save, Margo. Now, that, let me look at my timer. There it is. <laughs> I'm like a squirrel. <laughs> I've got five minutes before I have to put this in. So we can just set it to the side right over there. This is such an easy meal. Look at that mess. Um, so we, like this, that was the hardest part right there was getting those latkes put together and voila, they're done. <laughs> That's the hardest part. This is so easy to put together. I should say you can easily make latkes, bake them now, and then wrap them and freeze them individually. They're a great little side dish. I mean, obviously they, they're nice with um, fried egg or something like that. Anything goes, okay? So don't, uh, don't hold back on that at all. I think what we can do is say, in five minutes I'm gonna pop that in the oven. We can go off camera, I can clean up a bit. When we put that in, we'll come back and get our broccoli oven ready. Put the latkes into the oven, so they're going. I'm gonna start getting the broccoli ready. We've done broccoli in the oven before, but I think this time we're at a lower temperature because that's where the oven's at. So right off the bat, all I want is the florets. So get rid of this stuff. Just get rid of it. Just lob it off. Now, if you have an ambitious plan to make some soup or something like that, then this can go in the soup. It's got a lot of flavor in it. You'd have to be doing it in the next day or so. So this, just cut them apart into flowers, and then we're going to cut them smaller than that. Just keep getting rid of the big bits. And then each flower cut in half, or if it's a really big one like this, maybe cut it into thirds. Get rid of some of that stem. And so that they're in pieces like this. You want more, a lot of the surface area to get oil, salt and pepper, that kind of thing. So you don't want big pieces or they're not all going to cook up nicely. Now we're getting this ready, and we're getting it ready well in advance. We're gonna add this to the oven when there's just five minutes left on the timer. When we, I know that sounds crazy. How's that gonna cook in five minutes? It's not. <laughs> I'm gonna take these out and put my cut bits in. Um, it's not going to cook that fast, but the pea mill bacon and the latkes need to stand for about 10 minutes before we start taking them out of the pan and cutting them. So that's why, because this would take 20 minutes in the oven. We're gonna put it in when there's five. That gives us 10 minutes for standing, five minutes for getting them out of the out of the tin and slicing the meat. So just we're just cutting it up. Now, something that I want to be, this is a good buy at $1.97 a pound, like a really good buy. No frill sales are on until next Wednesday, so that's the 17th. So get in there. My goodness, especially for that female bacon. I mean, what a good buy. You can't go wrong with that. And, and just take it home and pop it in the freezer. Really good deal. Get in there and get that, and get some of this broccoli too. If you, if you wanna know the truth of the matter, when I told my husband this morning that this is what I was making on the show today, um, I was going to make tomato soup at home, but I'm now making this meal when I go home. 
and this meal that I'm preparing here, I'll be feeding forward to a family in the community uh, based on the generous donation from No Frills of the Ingredients here today. It makes us able to do that, to share it around. Some of these are small enough. They're falling apart, so we don't need to cut them apart necessarily. Just keep going. This is lots. As always, No Frills was generous. <laughs> Get rid of the big pieces. We don't want the leaf. And I'll tell you what, since I'm just cutting, we can chat while I cut, and I won't hurt myself, I swear. Um, <laughs> this week, the kitchen here at Westminster has been so busy, and we're working, working on a fundraiser that we're hosting this Sunday. And we've been so busy myself and a bunch of ladies from the church here. We were working together, and we made turkey pot pies and apple crisp, which are for sale this Sunday. The, this uh, Sunday is the 14th, November 14th. You can call the church and order a pot pie or an apple crisp. Not so much order it as reserve it. We're not making more. When they're gone, they're gone. <laughs> but you can reserve one or both. Or you can just drop by on Sunday between 11.30 and 1 o'clock and try your luck at getting one. I'll be here and handing them out and grabbing them. We're selling them frozen, so you don't have to cook it right away. We've got them all ready. As a matter of fact, Shannon, we've got some pot pies in here. <laughs> so, wow. And there's another freezer that's filled to the max. Like it was getting, like I was making calls saying, I think we need to buy another freezer. And I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it was was touch and go on whether or not we had enough space. So apple crisp and, and turkey pot pie, they're sold with instructions on how to bake. Basically, you're looking at about an hour, pop, it in, pop both of them in the oven from frozen, and you've got dinner an hour later. I mean, it couldn't be any easier. I'll tell you, these are homemade. I personally roasted 60 pounds of turkey. For, <laughs> for these pot pies. I think we used, I think we went through something close to 40 pounds of apples. It was a, it was a sticky mess in here that day. So they're all, this is, this is proper food. This is not processed food. This is all good stuff, fresh ingredients, potatoes, carrots, you know, everything. It's all homemade. Um, all put together frozen, you take them home, bake them on a weeknight when you're busy from work, you come in, you need an hour. You need to preheat your oven in an hour. It's brilliant, it's ready. They will be for sale for $15 a piece. They're like a nine inch square pan, so it'll feed four people easily. Um, $15 a piece, or you can get one of each and have a meal and a dessert for $25 for four people. And I'm sorry, but where do you get a meal for four people for $25 that includes dessert and was no work to you? This is a really good deal. And it supports the church and our outreach programs. So, all good. You get a nice dinner and you're helping us help people who could use a helping hand. This is the ultimate pay it forward. Broccoli is weird because it's so messy. And you know what? If you try to clean it up with a wet cloth, good luck. You've got to dry clean that, okay? You've got to just brush that off with a paper towel or something. Don't get your, your dish cloth in there. It's just going to stick to it and make a mess. So this, once we get all of this chopped up and in the bowl, I hope you come by. And if you come by and see me here on Sunday when you come and get your, your, your pot pie, your apple crisp, or both, please mention that you heard about the sale on the video and, and let me know. It's nice for me to know that people watch and, you know, actually hear what I say. <laughs> and sometimes that's not perfectly clear, and that's also okay. Look at that. There's always a lot of stem, and it's woody if you leave it. We can go off camera while I finish cutting this up, and then we'll come back, and I'll tell you what to do with the rest of this to get it up and ready. The broccoli's all chopped up. Look at that. There's another tablespoon of oil in that bottle. It's like I didn't throw it out already. We would have lost that great opportunity. I don't know. It's going to take a long time for it to all come out. You want 
about a tablespoon. I'm not sure I got it all, so I'm going to do another little shot. Of course I am anyway, right? So just give a little toss of that and then some salt and pepper. Don't be so heavy on the salt on your broccoli. I've got about a teaspoon there probably. And then, you know I'm going to say broccoli likes pepper, so don't be afraid to get some pepper in there. I'm going to go at least a tablespoon of pepper, sprinkle it on. And then, your choice, I prefer to use some breadcrumbs, but if you don't have breadcrumbs or you just think you'd rather have Parmesan cheese, one or the other. I have these panko ones left over from, I think, one of our local food club kits one week. So I thought this is a great spot to use them. I'm going to go like two tablespoons or so. Maybe I'll go one more. That's not a real tablespoon. We'll just do that. And then get either your hands or another spoon and just toss to coat. Okay, just keep working it through. And if it doesn't seem like we have enough oil, we can drizzle some more once we get it on the baking sheet here. I got a casserole dish out because I like the sides. Then if I try to stir it around, I don't knock it off accidentally and have it in the bottom of the oven. Especially if you have an element in the bottom. How many times have you done that? And then you're trying to fish it out of there and it's very dangerous. Don't do that. I was thinking it was just the bits of broccoli, but then I remembered I had those breadcrumbs, so I rescued some. You know what? I think it could use another little bit of oil. This is a lot of broccoli. Wow. They're so generous with me over there. So grab your oil. If it doesn't look like if you kind of think, hmm, maybe it needs more, and just do a little, a little drizzle around. Try to have a steady hand, okay, so you don't get a big blob in one spot. This is going to go in the oven when you're at the five minute mark on your timer. So right now my timer shows 10 minutes remaining. I'm not going to worry. Off camera I'm going to put it in at the five minute mark and then I'll see you when it's time to take the latkes and penal bacon out. I'll see you in the oven. You can see how nice these look and be careful about steam when you take the foil off of the female bacon. And there we go. Be careful about the steam. And I want to get it out of that liquid, so just fork in, lift it out, move it to a plate. You saw how easy that fork went in. It is cooked. And then just put that loosely over the top again. We're going to let this sit. I push the broccoli around a little bit with a spoon. I put 10 minutes on the timer. 15, sorry. 15 minutes on the timer. And let this sit and then we're going to start cutting it up, okay? I'll see you. My timer just went, so that means at this point, I set my timer and I'm going to turn it on, give it five more minutes. And in those five minutes, that'll finish. And in the meantime, we'll start slicing the female bacon and we'll get those out of the pan. So they've rested for 10 minutes and that's what we want. And then just this plate with all that on it, no more using, okay? <laughs> Now when I cut female, I usually, look, I mean, cut it in half so that you can then tip it. And now you've got a nice level surface for cutting it on. Don't torment yourself with trying to cut it well. It's all wiggly and rounded on the edges. And then by letting it sit, you can get some nice slices and you can see how this makes a beautiful sandwich. I'm just gonna cut that much right now and we're gonna get ready to plate it up. Look at how nice that is. We just do that, like that. There we go. This will come back to, if I'm doing it for sandwiches, I let it get right cold and it's even easier to slice. These, I kind of wish, I loosened them a little bit and I wish that I had just buttered the pan instead of using that spray because they came out easy. They come out easier when you just butter the pan. I mean, they're not a mess, but it's a little more work than I want. There's one. I think we can go at least two, if not three. We'll start with two. We've got that ready. And now let's get our broccoli out of the oven. This can slide over there. And I'm just going to get a hot pad for the broccoli to pan to come out on. I think it's probably pretty close. 
This is showing one and a half minutes. I'm going to say it's okay. It's broccoli. It's going to be cooked. And oh, here we go. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Look at the nice color on it. The, the bread crumbs give it good color and flavor. And we'll get a spoon. I'm going to get some broccoli. And down at the other end, I have a big bowl of applesauce that one of the ladies who helped with apple crisp used some of the apples that were left over and made up a big pot of applesauce for us. So look at this. With the latkes, I highly recommend that you serve it with either applesauce or sour cream for garnish. I like applesauce. I'm just getting a spoon, Shannon. Sorry about that. And we'll put Look at how nice this is, homemade applesauce. Fantastic. Just put it right there beside your latkes and you have a beautiful meal. Look at how much food we've just made. And I said we spent about eight bucks. Can you, can you imagine? Like these are all things you've got. You might already have potatoes at home. This is such a, and it's beautiful. And what nice food, you're gonna love the latkes. Please make them. You're really going to enjoy it. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you know when the next one comes. We're gonna feed this food forward, but I'm gonna package it all up and send it out to a family here in town as soon as I've cleaned up my kitchen. Quit letting food eat up all your time and money. You saw how easy this was. Okay, start to finish, we're done. We're got, you've got food on the table tonight. You could always make these up a little bit ahead of time if you wanted to. If you're interested in some classes, please message me and let me know. And I would love to see you this Sunday and come by and get one of those turkey pot pies and apple crisp. I was thinking off camera, I should mention, pot pies have a biscuit top, not a pastry top. Ladies and I made 700, 700 biscuits for these. You've got to get in here and get them. These are handmade biscuits. This is good food. I'll see you on Sunday, I hope. And in the meantime, I'll see you next week. Take good care. Thank you.